That was awesome. Did you guys love that intro? Hi, John. How are you doing today? Hey, how you doing? I'm, I'm here pushing buttons. <laughs> John's there pushing buttons following me. I'm Cinnamon Cooney. I'm your art Sherpa. And you are here for quest number five, Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> I did. I went there. I've been going there since that book came out because I was like, really? Like, I thought it was a book on color. Hugely disappointed. <laughs> Not a book on paint. Not a book on paint. Now, that happens to me more than you think. I've had Anne Rice get me a couple times, too. <laughs> no vampires in this book. None. <laughs> Don't like that. So, but here's an interesting fact. There's about 40 shades and hues that people can see at their maximum. And most people see about 15. And this is a skill you can actually develop and hone and improve but mm. people just don't know to do it and it's one of the most useful skills in an artist's little toolkit and i have this belief i have a belief in the self-trained artist mm -hmm. i actually really think that self-toss artists can do some of the most amazing fresh expressive work out there and that with just a little bit of information that big things are possible. And this is one of those quests that is going to be a keystone, a foundation. Mm -hmm. Because it, it's interesting, like we're painting hue, we're painting tone, we're painting tint, we're painting value. But using those skills is how I make mountains look far, far away. And a tree look round. And leaves look as if they have shade. That's how I paint. It's those. It's that set of skills that allows me to create an illusion on what is essentially a flat canvas. I'm going to let you guys into a shocker here. There is no apple on this canvas. <laughs> <laughs> that apple doesn't exist. It's just a flat board. <laughs> <laughs> it's illusion. It's illusion. Art is illusion. I think that's some of why we like to watch it in time lapse. And we like to relate to it. And the thing is, is that one of the number one things I've seen new artists do is they'll send me a picture and they'll be like, you know, what do I need to do different? What's the critique? And it's not even about a critique. It's like, oh, I need to help you see more. Mm -hmm. Right. I need to help you see the highlight at the top of that tree and the shadow underneath. And if you start to see those things, then you're going to paint entirely differently. Mm -hmm. And again, this is one of those things that I think um, gets put into the weird talent bucket. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> where it doesn't belong. So we're going to take it back out of the talent bucket and just put it in our tool set where it does belong. I This is a live class, so yes. you can ask questions as we go. If you need anything explained further, John, who is Sherpa tracking me today, will be following me on the mic. I'm going to try. And, you know, if you're coming on the replay, there's a chance somebody asked a question that you're thinking in your head. It's amazing how it works. It's why we like to do these live. So there's a good chance your information is here, too. I have just got acrylic paint today. I've got black. I've got white. Oh, oh go over Thalo black. blue and some burnt sienna. I was reading notes. You are reading notes? We notes have wishes coming in. Yeah, I got, I got nothing to put wishes on. Oh, well, then we're just going to put some <laughs> ephemeral wishes out in, there. In, in the universe. Yeah. Like, so. I, I know I'm wishing... Um, uh, I put a wish in there for... I put some wishes in your text. Yeah. For, like, good first day of kindergarten. Good we'll, we'll save them up for later this afternoon. Okay, we're going to save them up for later this afternoon because we may do an expanded thing later this afternoon. Be sure that you've got something nice to sippy sippy. Oh. So just in case you're getting stressed, you can sit back and go, this is just my art quest. It's not a class. I don't have to worry about it. I'm not being graded. I'm just questing. Hmm. Well, we'll let uh, IMP Mulca Mulcahy know that we're going to save that wish for Chris for later. And yeah. for everybody else who's putting them in there, yeah. we'll definitely be getting those. We're going to be back at 2.30 yep. to do the Grisai technique. Okay. So I know you guys are excited, but I just wanted you to know that this thing that we're doing here with this grayscale and tints and shades and tones and grayscale, and I wrote shades twice. Why did I do that? <laughs> because you have gray shades and tints, black shades? tones, and shades. And then grayscale, it's, yeah, welcome you to the world of being an artist. <laughs> so I'm working on my acrylic pad again with the paper so I can clip it and put it in my book. You're going to be putting this in your book. One of the things that you're going to want to do is find a picture that you like. This is a hint to an upcoming lesson we've got coming on. I printed this out. I took the color information out. I put it on grayscale, and I increased its contrast a little bit. But just any black and white photo mm -hmm. that you like. 
Just print it out and glue it, mod podge it. I used artsy tools, gloss, medium, and varnish, like I like to. Oh, yeah. So, and we're going to be working on that in a little bit. All right. I wonder who took the color test. Did anyone test their, t their eyes think, on the mini quest? I, oh, I think that there was because I saw a link up there and I saw the ladies talking about, uh, you know, testing eyes and seeing colors and shades of gray and all sorts of fun yeah. joking. This is the gray that's worth seeing. These shades of gray are actually useful in your life and not a whiny, whiny millionaire with lots of emotional problems. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I missed that. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I just, when we were in Canada, when the book came out and all the guys were so excited that their wife was reading this book. And so then when I, I went and saw the movie, I was like, well, that was just. There's a lot of people who are. Who got, who Twilight, but not as well written, which is saying something. I'm sorry if you're a big fan of the book. I apologize right now. Ooh. I didn't, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry. So there were a lot of people who did the testing, though. <laughs> Do they? I mean, there's a range of numbers, so I don't know what what the there's we've, we've gotten people from a four to a twenty seven. Yeah. So it's a it's a big range. So just know you can go back to that site and test, and you'll find that that number improves over time. The more you paint, the more that number will improve. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting thing that happens. You will start to see more. You'll start to think at some point that you were living in a life that's a little bit black and white. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no joke here. And it's coming more and more into perspective, into focus, into color. Because your eyes will start to strengthen. Your connection between your eyes and your brain and your creativity will start to strengthen. There's probably some scientific explanation for this. I can just tell you anecdotally. Your eyes, your brain, and the sector that's in charge of creativity, they start to hook up. Magic starts to happen, and you're like, I know. Every wow. time you say this, every time you say you're going to go out there and train your eyes, I think of like Rocky Balboa running up the stairs and looking at a color chart. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's exactly what you should do. I put out some black, some white, some burnt sienna, and some phthalo blue. And the first thing we're going to talk about, you'll hear, if you're taking, one of the things that I hope for you is that, not just that you guys stay here and paint with us, but that you can go to anybody's channel. That you can go to any class, and when they start talking this nonsense, because no one ever stops to really explain what they're doing sometimes in these classes, that yeah. you're like, oh yeah, I totally know. I totally know what they're saying. That's my goal for you, mm -hmm. is to be out in places and like, you know, you know, even if you didn't go to art school, you're like, yeah, I got this. This is all good. I know a tint. Totally know what a tint is. A tint is when you add white to a hue and you say to yourself, but what's a hue? Every color on the color wheel. That's easy. Every color on the color wheel is a hue. Guess what's not on the color wheel, John? Black. And white. Cool. They're not on the color wheel. Because they're full and they're saturation level. Because they're, no. they're, they're the things that tint and shade oh, and tone. I see. Paint, right? And I don't have a little Sharpie here. I'll paint this out later. <laughs> I, I write it back hold in. on. I got it right here. You do? Just, just dude. All right, we're going to go like this because uh, black to hue. We're going to just put tone here. You guys write it neater. You're so tone. creative. All right, so tint is when you add white to a hue. And a lot of us are really familiar with this in the most famous of the tints. Does anybody know what the most famous tint is? Medium? Pink. 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 Everybody oh. knows tints. Oh. Everybody knows pink. First tint <laughs> anybody learns on planet Earth. You got a little girl in your life, you know pink. Gotcha. I didn't think right. about that. Yeah. Think about the first thing that kids learn that they can make by adding white to color. Michelle got it. Yeah. She knew. She knew because she probably has. She was like, boom, pink. Um, <laughs> pink. <laughs> so I'm going to sit here and I've got my phthalo blue and my white. And I'm going to take one phthalo and one white. Right? Kristen knew too. And I'm going to mix right here. See? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to add a, one more white. I'm going to come right next to it. Add one more white. Come right next to it. Add one more white. Come right next to it. You can kind of see the tint changing as I go. You may need to, if your brush is overloaded, you may need to, to wipe it. Pull, you know, add one more white. See? So there we go, right? And then I can go the other way. I'm going to rinse out. I'm going to go the other way. What, so 
Let me yeah. ask you then. I have a que- I have an answer to whatever you're about to ask. One mm-hmm. white, one blue. Okay, okay. So which? What is a medium hue? Well, that would be what's in the middle here. We're about to build it. So I'm going to okay. add one more blue to this. I'm going to add one more blue. Yeah. Come over here. Add one more blue. All right. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So right there is a medium hue. So, so when somebody's like saying to you, medium, a medium tint, right? A medium tone, they're usually talking about the middle of the gradation of what you're adding to. If you were to paint a monochromatic painting, that's a painting all in one hue, you would use the tint to do that. Now, does that mean that cadmium red me- medium hue? So when they're saying cadmium red medium hue, mm-hmm. they're just being cheeky. It's color on the color wheel. So what they're trying to say, and you know, it's sort of like when you call it a gicle, a gicle, but really it's just a large format print. Okay, yeah. Okay, so they've got hue. I mean, it's more serious for them than that because it's golden. But they've got hue, and they're just letting you know we didn't use cadmium pigment in this. We created the cadmium color using a mixture of colors on the color wheel. Gotcha. But it's not true cadmium pigment. And it does matter on your painting at, like, as you take your painting up and up and your skills improve and improve, you're going to at some point go, you know, my poppies don't look right unless they're actual cadmium pig- pigment. Oh, gotcha. You'll, but, you know, at the beginning, you don't even see it. So cadmium red medium hue is basically saying it's just like the medium hue of cadmium red. Yep. Gotcha. Just like it, but not it. But but, but not cadmium red. It is the hue of cadmium red, but not cadmium red. Nope. Cadmium, pig, cadmium pigments were used in gotcha. the creation of this hue. Gotcha. Okay, right? cool. Yeah. All right. So Some that makes more cool sense. cool stuff. Thank yeah. you. Now... When we talk about tones... I actually didn't know that. I did you not? No, I did not understand any of that. <laughs> I hope that makes... See, that's why the paint store is confusing. You like look at this thing, you're like, cadmium red, cadmium red, medium hue. How are these different? That's how they're different. If any time you see paint say hue, like it specifically tells you it's a hue, yeah. what they're saying is there was some other ingredient, like real lapis lazuli ground stone. That they're choosing not to put in that paint because it would cost you 150 bucks a tube. Gotcha. But they've mixed it really close. <laughs> so lapis lazuli medium hue <laughs> would would be like the color of lapis lazuli in the medium hue. But not lapis lazuli in the paint. Right. Gotcha. There's none of that. That makes you sense. Buy that from Michael Harding for six hundred dollars a tube. Yeah, and that's like that's awesomely cool. If you would like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can paint next to that lady that's throwing paint off the back of her Lear jet. Yeah. So I'm, I'm with Stacy. Be friends with her. <laughs> yeah, Stacy in chat said that, like, when she goes to the paint store, she feels like it's a foreign language in there. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, like, I had no idea what a filbert was or what medium hue was or any of that stuff. So this has, for me, been really good, too. And sometimes it feels like our representatives in the art world don't always explain things in a way that's just pragmatic and practical. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, you, you ask a question about hue and suddenly you're in like some incredible art history lesson that you didn't really sign up for. You're like, I just want to know what the tube means. <laughs> just tell me. And so that's that's why I kind of like to just sort of take it down and just make it sort of regular. Yeah. <laughs> not that it's not special. It's totally special. It's just, you know, it doesn't need to be all crazy like that. Cool. So we're talking about tone. In toning a paint, right, mm-hmm. oh, sometimes I refer to it as graying it out. You've heard me say that. Gray it out. Mm-hmm. Gray it out. Well, there's a couple ways you can tone, right? You can mm-hmm. add actual gray, right, in dark gray to light gray to a hue, which is just any color on the color wheel. Mm-hmm. The one that's relative to you, though, we don't need to do that here right now. You're never going to do that in painting. You might add white. To a hue, you might, right, add gray to a hue, but you're not. But you might add black to a hue. You're just not going to add gray in painting. That's what I'm trying to say. Dude. There I am. That's what I'm saying. You're not going to add gray. It's just, it's just really, I know someone's going to come and comment. And they're like, oh, I add gray all the time. Okay, you, one guy, you're going to add gray. But the rest of us are not going to add gray because you know what it does? grays out the painting and a gray painting is not visually exciting but what do we do all the time in our painting practice 
I'm going to show you the example with burnt sienna and thalo blue. And I'm always saying burnt sienna grays thalo blue. Why does it gray thalo blue? Because they're complements. They're close to being opposites on the color wheel. Whenever you use complements, I'm particularly fond of using dog zinine purple and cad yellow in painting as yeah. complements, right? And blue and orange are complements. And burnt sienna is to the orange. And so by doing mixtures of this, I can tone tint the paint, right? Yeah. Tone, tint, shade. I can gray the paint. Right. You can, yeah. All right. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to just do one. We've done this kind of already before, but we're going to do a one, one and come here in the middle. And then I'm going to start going dominant to the brown like we've done before, but we're going to just make a little run this way. And you can see the ranges that you can get, right, mm -hmm. with that blue. And I'm going to wipe this off. And I'm going to do one, one again. And then I'm going to add one more blue. And one more blue. One more blue. And one more blue. And you can kind of see how that paint has been grayed. Yeah. That's all it is. That's not that crazy. This is pretty much where most of your painting exists. Especially in landscape painting. Interesting <laughs> enough, you're here and you're here. Generally, I actually try to use being here instead of using uh, black. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I've watched you do that, but not understood it in the past. Yeah, because black, I feel, this is a feeling I have, and artists have passionate feelings that do not agree with me on this issue, <laughs> right? Black, I feel, grays out the painting and not in the way I'm trying to gray it out like here, where I have beautiful hues still, but I have great tonality. So well, you'll hear someone, and they'll be talking about a painting, and they sound pretentious as all get out, and they'll be like, this painting has incredible tonality and dynamic tension. Now when you hear tonality, you're going to be like, oh, they grayed it out with hues. That's cool. Got it. Bright, vibrant painting with a wide range of tones. Got it. Not so crazy. Makes it much easier to be in a gallery and listen to people talk about the artwork. Mm -hmm. Because you realize all that's happened is, is there's a language. There's just a language. And right now, you guys are all learning it. Yes. And it's a language that anybody can learn. It's not like only some people can learn this language. It's not even a hard language to learn. Because I, I mean, a lot of us artists have learned it. It's like clearly by my little sheet. It's so dyslexic. It's dyslexic. It's amazing I get anything out. Yeah. So I'm going to take one black and one blue. You guys should be doing this at home. I don't know if I was clear about that, but I'm sure you are. And I'm going to come here. And then I'm going to add a black. And I'm going to add a black. It doesn't take very long for it to get, seem really, really black. Hmm. Right? Till we get all the way to black. Because black is a very powerful color. Yes. I'm going to wipe this off. I'm going to get back to center. Right? And I'm going to add a blue. You'll see it be more here as I come up the scale. You can kind of see how the black darkens. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes used correctly will make a hue seem richer. See? That's all that is. That's the little scale. You get this in your book, it's never going to throw you again. Yeah. Right? And it's one of those things, it's like a tongue twister. And you're just like, you need to know it, but sometimes it gets like, you know, if you're like kind of in a Zen art place, you'd be like in your book, and you're like, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Tint, tone, shade. Tint, yeah. tone, shade. Yeah, I can I can see like how it'd be really valuable to go through and and using complements learn to tone all of the colors. If you can tone, right, yeah. your colors with complements, you will have vibrant paintings. Yeah. So uh, Drema is one of my favorite painters, or Carol Marine is one of my favorite painters. Um, they are incredible at using complements to create tones. Most oil painters, who are also referred to as tonalists, actually use black. 
yeah. or gray. They use actual grayscale, which is what the Grisai whole thing is about. This is about how traditionally oil painters and that type of high realism artists would get the work done, right? So this is a way to do it. So when you look at an artist like Carol Marine or Drama or Aframov, just to try to see if any of these artists are familiar to, we refer to them, oh, well, let's do famous, Monet, Manet, Cezanne, Van Gogh, colorists, yeah. not tonalists. Colorists use complements to create tone. Oh, tonalists makes more sense. Use gray to create tone. Gotcha. I I get it now. Okay, that totally makes me understand a whole lot of videos I've been watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like easier. So you'll see a colorist, and like the tonalist will have done a, a grayscale study underneath the painting. Yeah, yeah. I've seen so that. the shadow will be on that, and then they'll create layers of glazes of color over the top. And that's how they get that effect. The colorists go, that shadow is blue with a tint of purple. And you just like get in there and you're like, I know it's a shadow, but it's a shadow done as if I'm really outside. Do you know how when you're really outside in a beautiful space, this week, see if you can notice some incredible patch of light where the color just feels like it's been saturated around you and it's reflecting in the ground and it's reflecting places. Think about how you'd actually paint that if you were a colorist. Now, yeah, what's remarkable? You can't do it from a photograph, by the way. No, no, you no. You have no. to paint tonalism from a photograph. Huh. Because photographs don't see the world correctly. I There's a brilliant PhD in color that explained this once. I'm not even going to try to explain it how she explained it. Oh, right, right, right. Because the You go by and ask my mom her name. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally get what you're saying. But uh, that's one of the things that I noticed is that when going out and, you know, I was doing some photography stuff, that your eye in those wonderful, super saturated areas, there's no black. It's mm -hmm. all just color. It is all just color. And that's what plain air painting is for. So when you see Mr. Negolero walking his little tuchus out into the woods, right, what he's trying to do as an artist is he knows he will not see the world as it is from a photograph. Right. Right. He'll see the curvature of the line he'll see the value right the light to dark range of the world but he won't see the true color of the world right so that's why he huffs himself out into the wilds of sweden i don't need i can't even feel bad he's going out in sweden so i can't yeah no, that's awesome Dude, i love it you're going out to sweden i mean there's like mosquitoes but i is there wildlife in sweden mona that will eat you <laughs> i don't know like in texas we got I think some they have bears there's bears oh. no they killed all the bears didn't they in Sweden? Yeah. I don't think so. I thought Europe like killed all the wolves and all the bears. No, I don't think so. Okay. And no. just like going by Le Pac de Loup, which no. is probably not historically accurate. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think they're, I, I'm pretty sure there are still bears and wolves the out there. The beast of Chivasol. All right. So we're going to do grayscale. And this is the 50 shades of gray. Look, most of you can see 10 to 20 shades. The more shades you can see, the more beautifully you can paint. Yeah. So if you were to say take one white and one black, right? Yeah. There yeah. you go. That's the middle. Yeah. Mona says they have bears, wolves, and mooses. And really? I tell, you, I tell you what. And the moose is I'm, the I'm scared of moose. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here's one more white, and I'm adding one more white. See how it's just lightning as I go? Yeah, you have to push that up. Okay. Is the puller of moose meese? <laughs> Mies. <laughs> not when you're running from that. Those are so big. They're huge. They're just so big. It's so not cool. See as we're going how it's just lightning, lightning, lightning. And hopefully as you're adding one, you can really see the differences between them. Right? Now if I go back to middle and I add one black, come here. Add one black. I mean, you can go buy a printed grayscale, guys. It's just nice to mix it yourself and see it happen in the paint. Add one black. You're just trying to get a sense of what's actually happening here. And there's nothing like you putting your hands on it. And then notice when you can't see it anymore. That's, that's where you're working. So, we're going to say this is a 10. 
People will talk in art classes, in YouTube tutorials. They'll be talking really quickly, and they're going to say, it is a five on the grayscale. So they're actually talking to you about a tone using the grayscale. Right? So if it's a uh, Burt Sienna to a tone of about five, what they're saying is this. That's what they're talking about. They're talking about on the gray scale. And sometimes you can use a gray scale and hold it up to a painting or a picture and you can be like, identify the darkest and lightest portions of your picture. Here we go. See that? Oh, yeah. See how I could use my gray scale then to go, this is about a what? This is about a what? And that's how people, when they're painting a white horse... Mm -hmm. Or snow, no, not to paint it all white. Yeah. Because they got their grayscale out. They got that out. They got that going. And that's how they worked that out. I, I'm so excited to be sharing this with you guys yeah. today because this really is just the thing that makes it simple. We've got like over 200 people here, like 210 people here. 210 people are getting it today. So I'm going to pull this off to put in my book. You okay. do yours neater and cuter. You guys are so neat and cute. Oh. I Go love, ahead and share these. I've seen a lot of these books and pages from this stuff. It's so cool what people are doing. All the embossing and stamping and decorating. Look at that cow. And all of the... <laughs> <laughs> it's it. Moo. <laughs> I don't know where that cow came from, but it got. it's now a show cow. He's a show cow. It's a show cow. It's it's well, this cow is going to be uh, the, is the model for my colorful cow. It's a model cow. He's a model cow. It could be. He's a model cow. Because I did not go out and look at a live cow. Right? So, mix, when you fixed your um, cow to the paper, you want to take one and do, like, one white, one black. Make a gray and see if you can find a spot, right? Well, it's darker than that. Yeah. Look, right there. Ah. That's the similar, you're looking for what matches. Yeah. See that? I so you'd be like, oh, that's much darker. So then you could be like, but if I, what if I went lighter to light? So is the grayscale always set 1 to 10? No, I mean, it, it can get bigger, but most artists will be talking about. So what you're doing is you're trying to find where is this close? Now, because of the toner, there's a little brown into it. It's not going to be exact thing. You're looking for where am I getting close to matching these colors. Uh -huh. And play a game with yourself. This is just a game. You can mix five. Mix five values. See, there you go. That's pretty good. Where it looks like it might be disappearing. Yeah, you just bang. You know, into the space. And then you can just sort of play this game of, can I paint this in? Wow. Oh. Right, and then I knew that the darker one, and then that's a little too dark, so I can lighten that. Have you ever used ruby beholders to I, see tones? I have not. Do you know what a ruby beholder is? I have heard of it, yes. It's a quilting tool. Well, because I used to quilt. Yeah, but so uh, IMP was asking if you've ever used them. And I was like, huh, I've no, never heard I of them. No, I did not. I, I took some quilting classes. I'm a big fan of Bernina. Everybody went, <laughs> I'm a big fan of Bernina. And I did some quilting. And yeah, no, the girls were just like really frustrated with me in all the quilting classes. Because I could go make like these crazy fabric combinations. They're like, how are you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> and also, as many of you know, the big international quilting show is in Houston. Yes. So see how I found that color here, and I'm coming here, and I'm... This is how you actually paint things. This is what you're actually doing. And so that's what you're trying to find is the, the colors that make up... See, and you can just paint in... You can practice this over any black and white photo until you get it. Paint a cow. You could paint this cow. You can paint anything this way. That's kind of cool. It's kind of cool, right? You're kind of tripping out. And you could do that with like a color study too. You could like pick your yellow and You purple. can do that with a color study. You ever see those really cool monochromatic paintings where they use just yellow? 
Yeah. But it has all the values and shades. That's what this is all about. That's what this really coolness is all about. Mm. In old painting, they do grisaille. They do a black and white study like this. Yeah. Or an umber study. Almost all portraiture you'll see in that is an umber study, right? Which is they use burnt umber instead of black because it's a better undertone yeah. for the painting. And then they paint it in. Now, it's considered that you cannot do grisaille in acrylic, which is when you've gotten your black and white study, and then you take clear glazes of color and just glaze over it to colorize it, like colorizing an old photograph. Right. Now, I'm going to show you this afternoon that you can take a painting like this, any grayscale painting that you do, right? And you can take clear glazes using glazing medium or even gloss medium and varnish and paint right over this and get like this bright pop art, beautifully toned picture, just like the oil artists do. Nice. This is just a skill. It's a mini quest. And I just wanted to show you the mini quest because I felt like <laughs> if I was like, yeah, and paint a black and white picture and then do a grisaille on it, you'd be like, I don't, what are you, crazy lady? Hmm. What are you talking about? I gotta Google that. So I thought we'd take that journey together, but then we were talking that you guys might like to just even paint the apple in with me. So that would be the thing. Do you guys want to spend the next couple hours painting your own picture? That picture, by the way, is in the description center section where I hide quests and more information and uh, definitions because y'all know I get little it's live. So down there <laughs> are the notes. Where are the good notes for the quest? That's the map. Yes. So I give you a map, too, for the quest. So um, I'd love to know if you guys wanted to come back at 2.30 and paint in that apple with me. Oh, yes, they do. Oh, okay. They so do. we'll just paint it in We're together. Painting, yeah, definitely. They're it's all... going to be a slightly long project, but we'll paint it in together, and then we'll grisaille it. Now, what, what is a glaze? A glaze is a clear, translucent layer of paint that has a tint of hue to it. Gotcha. Okay. Well, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Now, Joanne wanted to know, uh, have you ever heard of doing paintings in the tones of mauve and then painting them? In the tones of mauve and then painting. I do the painting in the tones of mauve and then what do I do? And then, and then painting. So I'm guessing maybe you do the understudy in the, in the, in the mauve. Well, okay. So now you're getting into color theory. And here's what the, here's the deal is you can do an understudy, right? You can do the underpainting. You can do the tone out, tonal study in any color. And if you're really good at color theory, you can come back with glazes and create some banana stuff. You can get into, like, the, the great painters, master, contrast, triadics, harmonies. They understand how colors relate to each other on the wheel. And so they can create, even in a very static scene, huge drama. Yeah, you look at the painting. You know, you ever go up to a painting and feel like you could just fall into it? Like it just was pulling you in in some insane way? A lot of time that's about the artist understanding that foundational thing. So yes, you can totally do that. We're going to stick to the black and white and the brown for right now. But maybe we're going to get some more complicated things. We've got a lot of quests to go. I've got a lot of them planned. I actually have like the year. John can tell you I have the year like... <laughs> written up going wow we could probably hit year two and still be covering stuff right we're just we're just sharing the information for you so if you wanted it at the end of this year think how much stuff you're going to know about art yeah yeah no kidding so i've, I've been i've actually been somewhat distracted because there's a whole lot of questions that have been scrolling up and yes, oh okay i would love to answer questions before we go off everyone is really excited to do the painting of the apple so, All right, well, I'll just do the painting of the apple. So, uh, Michelle. It's a circle, so we can, that's why I picked it because it's a sphere, so it's a good light study. <laughs> but I didn't want to make you paint. In art school, you know what they make you paint? They make you paint a cone, a cube, and a sphere. And a sphere. I remember that. A lot. A you do lot. It in charcoal, and you do it in pencil, and then you do it in watercolor, and then you do it in acrylic, and you're like, um, is anything, can we paint anything, we, anything, anything? No, remember else? we got the advanced, and then we got, we got the cylinder, and we got the, the polyhedral, and then we oh. got the, you know, and then I think we got one other shape. So, because then you had multifaceted. <laughs> not, to, not to knock on school, but it really, it's like five in the morning, right? And you're like there with your little bag of supplies. Like, I, don't, I was up last night, and you're like, wait, is it the sphere? Yeah, let me tell you how bad you feel when you look by the room of the physics guys. No. <laughs> no. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, just yeah, have, have just our experiences. <laughs> all I'm saying is, I thought we'd all have a little more fun doing an apple, yeah, than a ball. Okay, so okay, I got questions. 
Now that I've been in shenanigans, uh, we get we get crit- we get critiqued <laughs> for this all the time. They're like, "Can you stop chatting?" I'm like, "I don't think we no, can. We've think tried and it's failed. <laughs> we tried." Uh, so Miss Cunningham was asking, "How do you get dark and light primary colors, prime colors?" So I'm guessing you know your well. That's uh, that's that you would tint it, or you would tone it, or you would shade it, right? You, you do your red, your blue, or your yellow, and tint stones or shades. Okay. So if I was doing a painting and say the primaries, which is a triadic painting, um, I would definitely be using tints and shades to lighten and darken, mm-hmm. right? My to make more pastel or deeper and richer the different reds and blues, and I just wouldn't be mixing the red, the blue, or the yellow together. I hope that answers that correctly. I think so. Okay. So PT is asking: Is it better when doing these little studies? To paint the darkest first, then go lighter, or lighter first, then go darker? Does it matter? Okay. In acrylic painting, I generally paint from the darkest to the lightest, so I tend to put, try to put in my shadows first, and then build up lights and lights and lights. You may have seen that. It's really noticeable in Moana, the speed paint. So oh, yeah. I shared that with you guys, so you could be like, because there's this dark, crazy, purple, hot mess, and then she sort of kind of comes out of it, but she looks crazy for like a while. Mm-hmm. Whereas in watercolor, I paint... The lightest colors first, and I retain those, I preserve those, and then add glazes and layers of darker colors, which is why it looks in a time lapse as if a watercolor is developing. Mm-hmm. Right? So I like to think acrylic is carved out of the universe, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and watercolor develops. Yeah, I mean, I, I really liked that side by side study, you know, because yeah. it was. It was like slow train wreck on the right that got better <laughs> at the end. <laughs> yeah, it's like in the last third, I'm always saying, in the last third, acrylic paintings come together. Yeah, it, now, re- it really was. You can do like this, what I'm showing you here, you get really good at this. You can do that thing that oil painters like to do, the colorists and the oil painters, that like to do dabs of color next to each other. It's, it's impressionistic. You'll see it a lot in the daily paints where they're like this, this, that. There's a lady, does, there's a new lady on YouTube did chicken. She's like with this big weird wide brush and you went chicken. I was like, yep. That's wow. Chicken. <laughs> Painting that alone, but yep. I mean, I'm painting the chicken, but I mean, that's a really, that's not something that you can even, you could in a workshop of people who were very familiar with these skills explain how you did that chicken. But to somebody new to painting, it's, it's like, you know, hitting them with calc. Yeah. It's just crazy to drop that on somebody. I, I have some artists I really love in, in life, and they have workshops. Not They're not on YouTube. They have workshops, and sometimes they'll be like, for beginning artists. And I'm looking at the work, I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, guys. Like, I'd be, like, hustling to keep up in this workshop. Mm-hmm. You know, that's some crazy stuff you're covering. Some This is some intense stuff. So, But this will get you that the quickest. If you were to say, do some black and white photos that you have always wanted to do and just try to match the grays paint in the areas that you see mm-hmm. practice that a few times you're going to find like it this is going to you're going to be like five really five to ten of these stuff will start to click your brain will start all that's happening is you're asking your brain a question it says i don't know you ask it again it goes i don't know <laughs> if you ask it again eventually it's like well i'm gonna go figure it out because you're clearly not gonna shut up about this yeah that's literally what your brain does i do it to it all the time it's like it's like i have to ask you a perspective question it goes no i don't know anything about that go away i'm like yeah i really have to match these lines here in this vanishing point can you go find that information i don't have it so you just keep asking that question eventually it's like you know the right side of your brain gets put back in charge of you mm-hmm that's really it's what's happening is your creative side of your brain that's spatial and experiential comes back in and says, oh, don't think of it as line and shape. <laughs> Let me show you. And it gets you through. But you have to make, you have to consistently ask of yourself these things for it to happen. But it can. And that's, I think, the real magic trick in art is not that somebody who practices 100,000 hours gets really, really skilled, even though that's completely admirable but it's kind of like, of course they got really skilled. They spent 100,000 hours. It's when people who don't know they can paint develop the skills. It's, I think that's what's magical in art is that anyone can develop the skills. Mm-hmm. That, to me, is the secret sauce. Yeah. Any questions? 
We, I got uh, I got monologuing like a villain. No, no. I mean, we have <laughs> we have everyone out here. First, I wanted to say thank you because we have a bunch of moderators. We have a bunch of thank really you. great sherpets, and they've been jumping in here and a- answering. I a hope lot you guys like seeing your portraits. I have I have to say something about portraits. Yes. So listen, those of you that did the portraits, those of you that are looking at the portraits, going Quest Four, freaking me out. That is the trust fall of art that you guys did. That mm-hmm. is the creative trust fall of the art world. The self-portrait is the hardest thing you'll ever do in art. Mountains, not hard. Water, not hard. Smoke, not hard. If you get through your self-portrait, you've now sent a benchmark where you've faced the most challenging thing you're going to face. Everything else after that is just cake. Yep. See, mad genius up in here going, yeah, that's good. And because we did it with tracing, we put kind of a safety net over that very dangerous space. And some of you will find that doing a self-portrait is extraordinarily clarifying. I saw a couple that were like, ooh, I could enter this in a show. and Mm -hmm. Like, these are really powerful, moving, topical pieces that speak to a human experience. Self-portraits are ridiculously honest. Hmm. It's just, it's crazy how honest they are. And you add the quotes to it, it gets really powerful stuff. So if you've done that, you pretty much know everything else in Quest. You've already climbed the hardest hill. Now you're just mixing colors of gray. Doesn't seem that bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can match up the grays on this cow. <laughs> I already well, did self portrait. Well, Phaedra was asking, uh, does the grayscale help when making skin tones? Yes. Oh, well, well, there's a. There you go. Yes. <laughs> cool. Yeah, um, it's like that's you guys are asking for skin tones. I can't get you to skin tones till we cover. The grayscale. A lot of stuff we can't get to till we cover the grayscale. I can't tell you how to knock mountains back into the distance by graying them out until we cover the grayscale. Mm-hmm. So in this in this particular case, this is a useful, useful. <laughs> just, I'm sorry, that movie was too much for me. <laughs> this is very useful. Now, the, uh, uh, PT was asking where to post pictures that they that she's painted. Okay, I love to see them. I have um, the Heart Party Facebook page. Yep. Um, you can message me privately. I'm getting caught up on those. I'm getting into those. Um, there is, you know, just Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'm on Pinterest. So you can share anywhere. You can share any way you want to. A lot of people share in the Angeluni group, which is Angela and Anderson and I have a group. Because sometimes we do projects together because we're crazy like that. Um, and she and I she and I are very similar minded, like hearted in that like we come from kind of a fine art background and mm-hmm. love sharing the magic that is being creative. Yeah. Yeah. So all those places, any of those, even email. I just, you know, I, I love to see it. John loves to see it. Oh, yeah. I read your comments to John. I'm like, look at this, look at this, look at this. And he actually, he hates Facebook, but he's been back on Facebook to see what y'all are painting. Yeah. And now Teresa was asking, you know, is it, can she do her self-portrait in any medium or does it have to be in acrylic? Any medium. Okay. Because it was, it was uh, taking on acrylic and self-portrait. At you the can very color it in with crayons. Heart. You can do it in just pencil. You can do it with pens. Right now, it's just, it's just about the taking trace it, off. it, trace it. Just yeah. practice the tracing skill, embellish it in some way with something, and write a quote that's meaningful to you. Yeah, just work it. Put it, out. it in your book. Yeah, look at it in a year. It's gonna be like, whoa, that was deep. <laughs> this is deep. I was just saying that to a friend of ours who, not part of the quest, did a portrait of herself. Yeah, and I was like, you need to look at this in six months. It's gonna be really powerful. It's gonna really be honest about where you're at right now. Mm-hmm. If you're really, really stuck in your life, sometimes a self-portrait will bring things into focus. Not to be weird, but it's like it's a weird thing happens. Yeah. And, you know, really, I, you know, I, I'm a big advocate of saying, you know, if you, you know, just pick up a paintbrush and paint. And, you know, except for when you have a, a temperature of 102, Stephanie, you should put it back down. Is that go st- to which bed. Stephanie is that? St- a sumper. Sumter. Just go back to bed back to bed put the brush sweetie. down 102 yes you don't need to be painting it well I, I guess that'd be some very interesting surrealistic painting <laughs> <Whee-hoo>. <laughs> some cold medicine up in here and a fever <laughs> it's like expressive a little, cow a little gouty from a <laughs> get some melting clocks <laughs> yeah you just dolly work up in there but all did self-portraits, Van Gogh, yeah. Dolly, all of them did it. Not because they're vain. They weren't vain at all. It was uncomfortable for them, too, just yeah. so you know. So when is Colorful Cow coming? Colorful Cow is Saturday. Saturday? Mm-hmm. 
I, I hope you guys are okay with the, the splatter pieces that are coming, the splatter Valentine's tree and the splatter Alice, that you can be done on your pad of acrylic paper. Yep. You just need to get liquid frisket, and you're good for that. Yeah. And it's a real fast project. And, like, once I show you this trick, you'll be like, you mean I can do all the splatter paintings I'm seeing on Pinterest? I'm like, yeah. Each. All of them. I thought Super I, easy. That was really crazy last night. I saw you doing a bunch of that. Yeah, like a bunch. Like, I was like, do you want to do this kind of splatter heart? No! <laughs> and between now and 2.30, we're going to find out what I make for intro and time-lapse stuff. They did grade out uh, the black and white apples. Okay, yeah. But Woohoo! It's going to be some black and white apples. So, all right, guys, I got to go. Go to find this guy's picture. Go find this guy's photograph. Oh, and I just want to, one thing to say about this. Um, he has actually been picked. I didn't know this till after I picked him by several YouTubers, including like Lockery and I think a couple others. And what I'll say about him is this guy in Paint My Photo is one of my favorite favorite still life photographers boy is he a resource really good photographer really good dude when you see a bunch of us youtubers just sort of organically pick like from the same paint my photo person mm -hmm. go check out their whole catalog yeah a lot of good work there yeah because they're doing a lot of the work for you they're lighting it they're arranging it's some good stuff this guy's rushing he's like off the chain he's so like this is so cool <laughs> <laughs> so i like him a lot and that's how that happens. And you should, if you ever notice that, you should be like, that should be like a, like a little clue to be like, I gotta check that guy out. Yeah. So I'll, are you guys going to come back and join us later? 2.30. We had a whole bunch of yeses on the All painting. All right. We're so. going to work at 2.30. Right. Now that we understand the concept and we're ready to do the work, just get all ready and I'll see. 16 by 20 canvases is what we'll do. We're going to do that? Yeah. Paint, I can paint the apples easy. Yeah. Love you guys. Love you. See you really soon. All right. Bye-bye.